This is 7 and 4 News Today. Get connected. Good morning, Brennan and Melissa. Joining me now is Amanda Wetzel. She's the assistant director here at the Grand Traverse Lighthouse. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Of course. So first of all, I just want to ask you a little bit about the history of this lighthouse. So we were designated in 1852, and that was when we had the previous light station. The lighthouse behind us was built in 1858 and had people living here until 1972. It wasn't until the mid-1980s when a group of women banded together to create the foundation that created our lighthouse museum. Um, about 10 years ago, we decided to create a keeper program and had people living in the house again. Okay, and that's what's really unique. And right now we have some of those lighthouse keepers with us. This is the Matthews family. Thanks for joining us this morning. First of all, Derek, I want you to kind of tell me the story of how you guys got started here. About three years ago, we uh, saw a program on TV about light lighthouse keepers of the week. And I did some internet research and found the Grand Traverse Lighthouse that they have that program. Okay, and then you guys have actually been here for three years now, and you come every summer. So kind of describe how you got started on that, and what are each of your roles? Okay, uh, the Lighthouse Keeper program, we're up here for a week. We take a week's vacation and come up. Um, my role is the handyman. I'll do anything from building some stuff, doing restoration, if I need to do any repairs, uh, the ground maintenance. My wife, Joy, she does the admissions desk to the museum, and my mom works in the gift shop. Okay, so kind of describe the hours. Um, you, you know, would you say this is fun, or is it a lot of work, or how would you describe it to people? It's both. It is fun work. Uh, the, the work piece is challenging since we have to make sure that we maintain the integrity of the house and the history of it. Uh, but it is fun at the same time. The hours during the off season were open from noon until four, and during the summer season, uh, we're open from ten until five. Okay, so you guys interact with all of the visitors that come here and everything, correct? That's correct. All right, and then Amanda, I wanted to ask you, how can people get involved with this program? Um, it's actually really easy to become a lighthouse keeper. All you have to do is go online to our website, and you can see our keeper calendar on the right-hand side of GrandTraverseLighthouse.com. You can see available dates, print out an application. If you submit your application and it's approved, you become a keeper. It's a small fee for an individual, it's $25. For a couple, it's $40. And then an additional program fee of about $110 to $125, depending on how many people are involved. Okay, but if they come back like the Matthews, or the Matthew family has, mm -hmm. they get a little special discount. Exactly. If you're a returning keeper, we just ask that you pay that application fee. And there you go. That's all it takes, and you get to live in an 1858 lighthouse for a week and get to meet people from all over the world. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And coming up, we're going to take you inside the lighthouse and share even more history. In Northport, Alyssa Heron, 7 and 4 News. House coming up, we'll take you inside and show you what it's like to be a lighthouse keeper. You're watching 7 and 4 News today. Good morning, Brendan and Melissa. Joining me again is Derek Matthews. He's a volunteer lighthouse keeper here at the Grand Traverse Lighthouse. Thanks for joining us again this morning. And, you know, first of all, I just want to ask, how did you get started becoming a lighthouse keeper? About three years ago, uh, I saw a TV program about lighthouse keepers uh, of the week program and did an Internet search. and We found the Grand Traverse Lighthouse up here. They do have that program. Okay, and so you guys have been coming here for about three years now. Um, I want to kind of have you describe some of your roles that you do, and right now we're actually standing on the side of the house that all of the volunteers live. That's correct. Um, my role, I am the general uh, maintenance man in essence. I'll take care of any restoration projects that are in work, um, doing building or repair. Also take care of the grounds, cutting the grass, making sure everything's squared away out there. Uh, my wife, Joy, she is in the admissions office for the museum portion. She'll uh, help answer any questions that individuals might have. And then my mom, uh, Hannah Laura, she works in the gift shop. Okay, and so all of the volunteers live on this side, but uh, where your wife works, Joy, that's on the other side of the building. So I want us to take a walk over there and kind of describe what this is, first of all, what we're about to see. Okay. So again, like you said, this is the volunteer side of the house. This is where we live. Uh, we have a bedroom down here on the first floor. There's a bedroom up on the second floor. Um, and then now we're entering into the first part of the museum. This is the McCormick study room. Um, and then into the kitchen area, 
Uh, and my wife, she works over here in the admissions area. Okay, well, thank you so much. And I'm going to turn it over to Assistant um, Director Amanda Wetzel. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having um, me. So kind of describe, this is what it used to look like. Yep, so we're standing right now in a 1916 kitchen. We've interpreted the lighthouse to about 1922, 1930. Um, so that's when the McCormick family lived here. The McCormick family lived here for about 15 years. And when we became a museum in the late 1980s, a lot of the children still lived in the area and donated a lot of family heirlooms back to us, but also told us a lot of what the lighthouse looked like, what it was like to grow up here. So we've interpreted everything as it was when they were here. You can still see pans on the stove. You can see the table set for dinner. Um, and when you go into the living room, you still see the organ that was a gift to Mrs. McCormick from her husband when they were married in 1899. Okay, and yeah, you were telling me that the kids came in here and they kind of described, you know, this is where mom would yep. cook and everything yeah, like that. We literally walked through here with our board of directors and said, this is where this was, this is how we ate, this is, you know, when we did laundry, everything. And we were really lucky to have them here. Um, we even do a Christmas at the Lighthouse event where everything, even the types of presents, things that were in their stockings are all interpreted just like it was when they were here. Um, some of the things they donated back were the china, that was their mother's china in the cabinet, and again that organ, which was actually brought all the way from Beaver Island. It was even taken to South Fox Island, where he was also a keeper. Okay. So. And this is the organ over here, actually, correct? Yeah, in the living room is the organ. It's one of the first things you see when you walk in. Um, and it does still work. We play it at Christmas time every year. Okay, and then this is their rooms that yep. they would stay in? Yeah, this is the keeper's bedroom. The keeper's bedroom would be on the main floor because it would be one of the warmest rooms. There was only really two central spots for heat, the kitchen and the living room. So he would be on the main floor, um, and then the small children would also live in here because it would be the warmest room in the house. Um, the other children would be upstairs, and they told stories of it being so cold that there was like a quarter-inch frost on their walls in the winter. That's how cold it could get here in the winter. Okay, and how long did Lighthouse Keepers live here before <laughs> you guys switched over to volunteer? Um, so we had keepers here from 1858 all the way until 1972. That's when we became an automated lighthouse. Um, so we do still have an active light. If you come out here around dark or early in the morning, you'll still see that light flashing. Um, and then we were vacant until the mid-1980s when a group of women banded together to create the Grand Traverse Foundation. And they began what is now our museum, and um, the director, Steph Staley, and myself run the place, and everything else is volunteers. Wonderful. And speaking of volunteers, um, there are opportunities for people to still volunteer, so how can they do that? Um, it's really easy. You can go to GrandTraverseLighthouse.com, and we have our entire Keeper page right there, and you can see our available dates on our Keeper calendar. And you can also um, pick up an application right there. We have some dates in July as well as October available still. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us thank this you. morning and all of this information and more will be on our website at upnorthlive.com. Reporting in Leelanau County, Alyssa Heron, 7 and 4 News.